All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for the, uh, the the latest episode in our departmental deep dive series. I know we are running a few minutes late. That is 100% my own fault. I was trying to get my kids situated. Um, so I appreciate everybody's patience and, and bearing with us. Tonight is a really unique and special program that we have. Tonight, we are highlighting our undeclared program. Um, generally, each year, Undeclared is among our largest programs and our most popular majors. Um, there are many times students who know they want to go to college, right? That normally seems to be the easier question to answer. The tougher question to answer is, what are you going to do when you get there? And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight is some of these services and some of the uh, mapped out methods we have to help you identify a major, get into the right program, and probably even identify a, a potential career. Um, before I go any further, though, I, I wanted to go ahead and, and introduce our team here, and we can start with uh, Dr. Willoughby. Thanks, Tom. So hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Willoughby. I am the executive director for student success and first year experience. That's a very long title, but as part of those du duties, I um, direct the academic advisement center, which is the home for all of our exploratory students. So I'm the person who you'll be seeing a lot of if you come to Bloomsburg undeclared. Um, I want to, undeclared is not a bad thing. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, mm -hmm. as we move forward this this evening. But honestly, um, I'm very excited to be here and to see all of you or to virtually see all of you um, and answer some of your questions. And Dr. Willoughby, you are a BU graduate, yes? Absolutely. I um, was an undergraduate here. I won't say how long ago, although it's on one of the slides, <laughs> I think. Um, so yeah, um, and part of my experience was also being briefly undeclared. So um, I can speak a little bit later about what that was like and why I did that. Sure, sure. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Willoughby. Uh, Sydney. Hi, I'm Sydney Brensinger. I'm a junior at Bloomsburg. I'm a secondary ed uh, English major. Um, I'm also an FYS mentor, so I work hand in hand with some undeclared students, some declared students. So I'm excited to be here. Great. And, and Sydney, when you say FYS, what, what is FYS? It's a first year seminar. Um, so students coming into Bloomsburg get put into the first year seminar class where they get to explore resources and the different majors here at Bloomsburg. Excellent. Great. Great. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, uh, Rachel. I'm Rachel Schaefer. I'm a success specialist um, at Bloomsburg. What that means is if students don't know who to ask a question to or if they're having any issues and maybe they need some support, um, I'm the one that directs them to the right place. Um, also, this year I'm a, an advisor for our exploratory or undeclared students, um, so I'm wearing a couple different hats right now. Right, right. And I see that there is a, a cat floating around in, in your, your home that, there. That's Rosie. Um, I actually, today's their gotcha day. I've figured out. I got them for Aww. you. So, oh, nice. Yeah, we're celebrating with this. So it is, uh, for, 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 this is I mean, this is the best way to celebrate. Right? Um, <laughs> it is national. My wife told me it's National Puppy Day or something. So um, you know, what's your cat's name? That's Rosie. And I have another, I have a tuxedo named Dudley that he might come around. Oh, I like that name, Dudley. They're, they're huskies at heart is what we always say. <laughs> yeah. right? Huskies, huskies at heart. Um, great. So before we get into our, our presentation here with Dr. Willoughby, um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, so this event is being recorded um, and it will be posted uh, to our YouTube channel and on our Facebook uh, recorded video section. Um, it should take probably around 30 or 40 minutes. If you have any questions, please, I would strongly encourage you asking. Um, what I'll do is I'll get the, the questions from the Facebook post and I will get them to the group here. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, there's no need to save them till the end. Please feel free to fire them off as they kind of pop into your mind. These are meant to be, you know, kind of an open discussion um, as opposed to, you know, a, a seminar style where, you know, Dr. Willoughby is kind of lecturing at you. We want this to be interactive. Um, so with that being said, I will turn it over to Dr. Willoughby and I will go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Cool. Thanks, Tom. So. Hi again, everyone. Um, hopefully your faculty experience doesn't just consist of folks lecturing at you. 
Um, so what we're going to do is run through some kind of info, general information about what it means to be exploratory at Bloomsburg and some of the resources that we have available to help you find your path. So I think that one of the major takeaways that we can kind of check off right off the bat is that it's okay to come to college and kind of not know what direction you want to go. Um, in fact, that can really open up a lot of different opportunities for you to explore, which is why we we use that term undeclared to kind of be technical about, you know, where you are in the in the finding your major process. But we like to call it exploratory because it really does provide you that kind of open playing field to figure out what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what your passion might be. So um, it's really an opportunity, I think, to to explore some of the things that um, that higher education has to offer. So a lot of the things that you'll find um, as potentially like majors and career options at Bloomsburg, you wouldn't necessarily have run into in your high school career. So, you know, a lot of students come to Bloomsburg, like, what is anthropology? I can, I can study that. I can take classes in that. Um, I've never seen a class like that before. So what does that mean? So it provides you a little bit of flexibility to be exploratory that you can take classes in a lot of different disciplines and figure out what kind of things sort of light your fire. Yeah, and honestly, Dr. Willoughby, I know I'm already jumping in here, but that's a great point. I mean, so when I started at Bloomsburg many, many years ago, probably half the majors I had never even heard of. I didn't even know that those things existed. So if I didn't even know that they existed, how would I be able to say, you know, hey, this might be the field I want to study and then pick my career for? Like, I didn't know that this was even a thing. Um, I did not start as undeclared. My life would have been significantly easier had I started as undeclared because what I did was I just bounced around from major to major, like, oh, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. Kind of like the whatever the shiny subject in the room was, um, which is not a great way to pick a major. No, <laughs> um, no, it's that's not. That's not what we want, right? Um, so either way, uh, that, that, that's a great point though. And we will uh, just go ahead and, and get started with your first slide here. Okay, thanks. So this is just some general information about exploratory students at Bloomsburg. So as Tom was saying earlier, um, it's one of the largest groups on campus, especially in the incoming class every fall. Um, so at one in eight students at Bloomsburg is exploratory at any given moment. So that means that there's lots of other people like you that are kind of figuring out what they want to do and what direction they want to go in. Um, so it's definitely not something that you have to like be ashamed of for any reason. There's lots of other people who are in that same boat and taking advantage of those opportunities also. So one in three students, and I'll tell this story a little bit later, and I know Rachel and Sydney can speak to this as well. Um, one in three students with a decided major end up changing it. So what Tom was talking about just now, um, you know, you come to college thinking you know what you wanna do. And then once you kind of get into the discipline and start learning more about it, maybe because it's something that you hadn't encountered in high school before, and you figure out well, maybe this just isn't my jam. You know, I don't really feel like it's resonating with me. Um, I need to change something up. So lots of students change their majors too. And that was kind of, there's, there's sometimes a pit stop as an exploratory student in between thinking you know what you want to do with your life, kind of figuring it out, and then getting there. So um, exploratory can be a good spot to land in if that is the case with you. Um, exploratory students are often curious about a lot of different majors. So you might be looking at the Bloomsburg webpage and like Tom was saying, looking at stuff as, you know, potential courses of study and going, I don't even know what that is, but I'm curious about it. It sounds kind of interesting being an exploratory student gives you the flexibility to kind of take classes in a number of different disciplines so that you can figure out what it is that you really like and that you're really good at maybe. Um, they're open to many possibilities for professions and careers too. Um, so being exploratory because it gives you that flexibility to be, um, to dip your toe, so to speak, into different areas. Um, there's lots of different things that you can kind of get interested in and say, okay, so I really like this class. I really like this kind of area that I think I'm finding myself in. What can I do with that? And then work with some of our resources to figure out what sorts of professions might 
you know, be at the end of the rainbow from, you know, an eggs major, right? So and I use that term eggs and I, one of my soapboxes is all of our abbreviations that we use at BU and lots of, in higher ed, it's mm -hmm. kind of like a thing that we do. Um, so eggs is environmental geological geosciences. So it's a science major. We affectionately call it eggs because that's its abbreviation in our catalog. Um, often also exploratory students might be working toward a specific major. So some of our majors have specific requirements that students have to meet before they can be admitted to that major. And so sometimes there's a gap in between where you are when you're admitted to Bloomsburg and where you need to be in order to be admitted to that major. Um, GPA requirements, course requirements, we want to see, you know, how you're going to do in certain areas. So we admit students on exploratory basis so that they can start working towards that major, but that also allows you, again, that flexibility to say, okay, yes, I think I know I want to do this. I'm going to take these classes, but I can also take classes over here and over here to see if there's something else that maybe makes me excited also. So it doesn't mean that you are then locked into that particular major that you might've been working towards. And one of the things we do, or at least we try to do in the front end in, in the admissions office is try to remind students that you're not obligated to pick a major, right? And I think that's one of the, one of the misnomers out there is that, well, I'm going to college, I guess I have to pick a major. And, and I get why that exists. I, I get why that's out there. But sometimes the best option, and I would say, man, probably a lot of times, the best option is to start as undeclared, because again, the odds are in your favor that you're probably going to change your major. Um, or you already don't know what exactly it is that, that you want to do. And, and I know, Sydney, you said you had started as undeclared. What was your decision process to go in to start off as, as undeclared? And then how did you transition into your current major as secondary education English? Um, so I wasn't like undeclared very like long. I was probably like the first like week and then I declared okay. my major. Um, mm -hmm. So I had a lot of influence from other people um, talking to mm -hmm. professors and upperclassmen that really influenced mm -hmm. me into getting into teaching. So I would say I didn't stay undeclared very long. It was kind of a, okay. And then I, my first week of the ad drop, I went to a lot of like classes right. and talked to a lot of professors. So that's really helped me make my decision. So basically you swung by, had a cup of coffee, Dr. <laughs> Willoughby found the, the perfect match for you. Mm -hmm. And over the course of one single conversation, career found uh, to be it's honest, that simple right uh, to be honest for me it was um I also right. come from people uh, being teachers um my dad okay. went to go to be a teacher my sister okay. did so uh -huh. I kind of wanted to be different from them and not go into teaching but <laughs> to be honest it didn't really work out that way and I found out right. that I did like teaching so right it's the family business yeah the family business um Rachel when you're advising students that you work with um, what are some of the more common reasons you see people changing their major? Um, one thing that I think students struggle with when they come in is that not all majors have a job title in their name. Um, so if you're going into education, you're going to be in a, a, some type of teaching role. If you're going into accounting, you're probably going to be an accountant. Um, but there are a lot of majors, like the, a lot of the business ones, a lot of the liberal arts ones, that you may not necessarily be whatever is in your major name. So you have to explore um, to kind of find what are what careers are attached to those majors. So right. as students kind of take classes and learn more about the fields, that's one reason that they want to change majors. Another one is they come in with an idea or maybe um, some influence from their supporters of what they wanna do. Um, they've heard this job makes a lot of money, um, but their passion is elsewhere. So they just keep trying to, to hide that passion, bury it. They know they wanna go for the money. Um, mm -hmm. but they end up getting drawn back into their major and it kind of works out in the end where maybe necessarily they start listening. They don't start, um, the, the outside influences, they kind of turn towards themselves instead of trying to figure out what other people want them to do. That's another big reason. Yeah, right. You, you bring up a good point. I know um, Dr. Uh, James Brown, um, the dean of the College of, of Liberal Arts, um, 
he always talks about how, you know, when student is a nursing major, no one's asking them, hey, what are you going to do with that degree? I mean, it's, it's right there in the title, you know, accounting, same thing, education, the same, you know, um, but there are certain majors where it's not quite as clear. That does not make them less powerful degrees. Um, however, you're going to have, like, you might feel a little external pressure in terms of like, oh man, I probably need, if everyone keeps asking me this, there's probably something to this. Like, this is probably cliche for a reason. I probably better hustle to find something. And sometimes that pressure can cause students to basically narrow their options only to pre-professional degrees. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes that, that works, you know, that's serendipitous and it ends up working out. That's not always the case. Um, so it, it is good to be aware that every degree is going to teach you skills that will put you in a, you know, honestly, a great position to be able to be successful. And then when you're in college, it is incumbent upon you to be able to make the most of the rest of your experience. And this is the case, whether you're accounting or English or any major is to make the most of your experiences when you're there, right? What else are you doing other than being in class and working on class projects? Like what are the, are you having a good, well-rounded education? And I know, you know, like when we're looking to hire people, that's one of the things we paid the most attention to is what else were you doing when you're there? Right. Um, but yeah, Rachel, that's, that's, that's a great point. Sorry, Dr. Willoughby. I didn't mean that. No, no, it's fine. It's an excellent point. As an, as a former English major, I was one of those people that they were asking, what are you going to do with that? Mm-hmm. As a, as a history major, the same thing. I tried to avoid it, but I just could not get away. That's what I was passionate about. Rachel, you and I too, you yeah. and I too, I got a lot of, oh, you're going to be a historian or yeah. no, nope. you're going to work. In, yeah. <laughs> what's the, what's the job, you know, the career prospects for being, you know, a philosopher or an anthropologist, you know, um, there's, you know, always some, some kind of jokes made. There's a lot of things that you can do with these degrees. And that's part of the reason, that's part of what Dr. Willoughby is here to do. So. Okay. So there are, as Tom was mentioning earlier, um, we kind of have, a lot of resources and programs to assist students who come in as exploratory students to help figure out what it is that really, you know, makes you passionate and drives you, right? So we have lots of different ways to do that. Um, And one of the things, so Sydney mentioned the FYS course earlier, the our exploratory students go into specific sections of that course so that that class is tailored to helping you try to figure out what you're going to major in and how to do that, right? Because that's a process that you never had to maybe, you know, do in high school. You know, you might do your your college prep or your advanced placement or your, you know, general studies sort of track, but you don't get to sort of pick what you're doing all the time. Um, So this whole process we know is new to most students who are coming to Bloomsburg. And so we have a lot of tools available to help you do that. One of them is academic advisors. So as an exploratory student, um, you'll be assigned to an academic advisor in the academic, I like to call it the exploratory student advisement center. but because that's what we do, right? So we're, we're devoted to the exploratory students to try to figure out not only how to help you satisfy those general education requirements that help you explore those different areas, but also to help you figure out, well, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What kinds of things are you drawn to? Um, where do you see yourself after graduation? So your advisor does way more than just help you schedule classes. They really try to mentor you and help you figure out what kinds of things interest you and what's going to make you happy in the end, you know? So as Rachel was saying, you know, you might try to get away from some of the things that you're passionate about because you kind of don't know what you might do with it necessarily, but it's really hard. I think when you get into higher education and you get into an environment like Bloomsburg, where there's so many options and exciting things available to you, that that thing that you really love is probably going to stand out to you and you're going to, you know, succeed in that area and be passionate about it. So the academic advisors will kind of help you figure that out. Um, One of the other tools that we all use to to, uh, give students more information about the different courses of study, again, those ones that you might not be familiar with from high school are the departmental websites. So there's lots of different, you'll see this huge list of like classes that you can take in all different kinds of departments. And that can be a little overwhelming, but the departmental websites are there to kind of say, okay, this is our discipline. This is what we do. Here are some careers that you might find yourself in if you pursue this avenue. Um, so the departmental websites can also can do that and they can hook you up with the 
folks in that department, which is also like a huge resource, um, department secretaries, the faculty, the chairpersons in that area who are gonna give you additional information about all of that. The online catalog kind of goes along with that. So you can see all the courses that are available. Sometimes course titles will be like, ooh, yes. that sounds interesting. <laughs> I was just gonna say that, like probably among the most helpful things on the website, um, on each individual like departmental website is the courses. Like, What are you gonna do? Yeah. If you're, if you're part of, you know, if you're a supply chain management major, like what are you actually going to do? Um, I think that might be among the most indicative things of, of, of the search process is figuring out, right, am I going to like this? Well, let me look at the classes first. That's mm -hmm. obviously, it goes well beyond that, but that's normally a good cursory glance at what you might be doing. And you can see the course titles and then the course descriptions and learn more about like what that class is going to be like, what are you going to do in it? Um, so that can, you know, I have a joke going with one of my staff people because we look at the like criminal justice courses have like really exciting titles because we've been watching a lot of CSI and stuff, you know? Um, so we're like, someday we're going to take these classes. That sounds so interesting to us. Not um, a day passes, not one single day passes where I don't look at a website and be like, oh my gosh, I should take that. Oh, I should have majored in this. What was yeah. I thinking? You know, um, <laughs> Now, again, now don't sleep on the history program either, though, Rachel. No, am I right? No, I mean, we're going to talk about some interesting too. course titles. Don't sleep on history. I mean, Rachel and I, we're going to rep history all night long. Yeah. We're team I, check, I check those classes every semester to see if there's something I want to take. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like dying to take more art studio classes too, since we have these oh, fabulous yes. studios places now. Oh my God. Oh my God. That print studio. Anyway. I, not gonna lie, the, the thing that's been on my mind recently is like theater. I feel like I would have enjoyed being in plays and things like that. Um, so the, the, obviously, you know, it's not gonna work now. Um, but, you know, I always wish I would have been involved in that. I think we need more productions that feature faculty and staff. I know. And I don't ask for much. Right. Hey, they'll eventually need some grandparents. <laughs> they will eventually need some grandparents. I'm not sure who that was directed for. <laughs> My kids are five and three, so hopefully it's not for a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so online catalog, great tool. Right. Um, to, move, to move from the classes and from the departments to kind of what am I doing with this major, um, the Career Services Center can be super helpful. Um, yeah. I'm going to hop down another sort of bullet point to the focus two assessment, which is something that we run through alumni and professional engagement which are part of the career services area, um, that tool can really help you assess what kinds of strengths and interests you have, like maybe you're not even aware of. Um, and then maybe from that lead you to, okay, you, you have aptitude in, in sort of these things. Maybe it'd be interesting to take some classes in those areas. So it can help to sort of steer you in a particular direction if you're feeling very undecided. Um, and then finally, the Husky Success Platform, I think is a fabulous tool for figuring out some of your different paths because it really puts everything that we have available on campus as a resource and a support in one place. So it's one of the things that I show my first year students like very soon after we start classes because it's a, it's a one-stop shop for all of the stuff that you can kind of just click around and explore and then figure out who you want to contact, what you want to ask that person, and then their contact information is right there. So it's a fabulous sort of like pulling together of all of the things on campus. So I kind of said this already, but um, alumni professional engagement is one area of the institution that is specifically designed to help students find their career paths. Um, regardless of what major you end up doing, they're the folks that are going to like help to springboard you from that major into a career. So they're a great resource for you to get connected with early. Um, and like, sometimes I'm asking, you know, my first year students, my incoming students to do that focus to assessment, like right off the bat, because that's something that you can use then to influence your decisions about courses and, and courses of study. Um, our exploratory student advisement center, like I said before, um, we sort of like live to serve these students and that's, that's our, 
that's our purpose here. So we want to, you know, provide you with all of the things, connect you to the people that you need to talk to, um, give you information about all these different courses of study, steer you in the right direction as far as how you're doing, you're, you know, you're doing fabulous in this class and maybe you should go talk to some people in that department. Here, I have their, their contact information, you know, I can help you get connected with those folks. And then people like Rachel, who are our success specialists, kind of can triage you to all sorts of different um, campus resources that you might find helpful in your in supporting all of this because it's it's a journey, right? Um, if you come to Bloomsburg as an exploratory student, you're gonna kind of go on this quest to find your your course of study and your major. So the success specialists are an excellent support for that as well. Yeah, and I, I know you know working in admissions, you know among the chief concerns we get you know from students and parents and supporters is all right. So if I come in as undeclared or exploratory. Um, they, their fear is that they're just going to be languishing, right? And casting about. And the reality is we've got a dedicated team of people here who are going to start to work with you day one. Some of those people are on this call right now um, to make sure that doesn't happen. And I would say that is one of the benefits of a school the size of Bloomsburg where it's big enough to have like a wealth of opportunities, but not overwhelmingly large where, and again, I know this is so cliche, but like you're not a number. Right. Because you, there's going to be a lot of um, familiar faces on campus. Right. And these are going um, these are among the faces that will be more familiar as a student who is undeclared or exploratory. And they're they're, they're not going to let you get lost in the shuffle. You know, um, now, Cindy, I know you were only um, undeclared for about a week, but you right now you have a student role um, working in, in this function. Can you talk about some of the things that you do and, and some of the services that you provide to to incoming students? So we get to go to their uh, university seminar class with them and we sit in with them and we help the professor kind of guide them throughout the lessons. Uh, I know the uh, center gives it like the uh, professor the whole like PowerPoints and everything that goes with the seminar, but we're kind of there to answer any questions where they might have about like social life on campus, academic right. questions, even though we're not, might not be in the major that they're looking for, we still give them the resources that they need. Sure. Um, I know this semester, I, my professor let me teach a lesson since I am a, okay. be a teacher, oh, so he oh, let yeah. me do it. So I taught them how to approach advisors and email them because interesting coming in we don't know how to so I was like yes. I'm reading English I was like oh we have to we have to address perfect I love that Sydney Th that so is a to teach great them topic that. yeah so I got to teach them that and I also got to te uh, teach about Husky success because they didn't know much about that right. um, we also help them with planning even though the class is over we set up programs for them so we have a planning program coming up next week where we'll go through with them on how my Husky works with planning, waking up early, putting it into your cart, scheduling right. it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we also, let, we have office hours so they can come to us about problems they might have, really anything. We're just a resource for them. Yeah. So they don't feel awkward going to a professor, an advisor. They can come yeah. to something that's more their age and can understand them a little better. Mm -hmm. Right. No, and I think that that's great. That, that topic is so, I mean, it, it seems like, oh, that's pretty basic but you know what you realize that like assertiveness is so important and mm -hmm. just being able to say hey look I need this yeah there's a lot of incoming people that's like they're scared to kind of be a burden you know and the reality is like we work for you right yeah. so yeah. um but we don't know that you need help unless you say you like we can't assume you need help so yeah. if you need something all you have to do is ask like you're literally you're a question away they're definitely and, scared they're so scared they exactly always, like, I gave them examples on how to like email professor and surprisingly like they all were good at it and we were like well did you read out to reach out to your advisors yet did you reach out to your professors and they were like right. no we're scared and I'm like that's what they're here for they're here to answer your questions they're here for you like do it it's okay our, our tour guides will say like yeah I saw you in your office but I was kind of scared to say I'm like of who of me yeah you're scared you know I hear that like I was, I was scared to talk to my advice it's like this is not the place for that mm -hmm. you know that's the don't do not be shy here mm -hmm. you know? that's yeah, great that's really interesting and Sydney's part of a whole network of peer mentors right. so 
she might be embedded in a course for our exploratory students, you mm -hmm. know, and if, if one of those students is, Hey, you know, I'll use, I'll use history as an example, since Appreciate I'm here it. with John and Rachel. Um, I'm really interested, like, so Sydney's, you know, secondary ed English, but if a student says to her, well, hey, I'm really interested in the history program, but I'm kind of scared to, you know, maybe go and talk to the department chair who, um, you know, what can you tell me about that? Even though she doesn't know, there's probably going to be another student in our network of peer mentors who is a history major um, mm -hmm. who can, you know, speak directly to that student about what their experience right. has been like. So that's another advantage of that as well. One thing yeah. that I wanted to touch on real quick, um, if you if a student is scared to talk to their advisor or their professor and they kind of get themselves into a situation, the success specialists definitely act as a liaison a lot of the time where I will send an email to a professor with the student included, introduce the student, maybe if they're their advisor and they've never met, um, and then kind of let the, the professor and the student continue the conversation. So there, there are ways that if you are, are really nervous because these are the first teachers you've ever had that have doctorates and they have PhDs. And I know I was very intimidated when I came here. Um, so we definitely do provide that help if if you need um, kind of a, a bridge between uh, right. you and your professor. Yep, an advocate. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so we had we had this list of success stories and Sydney's kind of talked about <laughs> hers already because uh, she was super successful in finding her major um, right away. So um, I included, so Rachel, or, uh, Sydney, is there anything else you wanna say about kind of about that process and what you had to do to really make that decision and, and concrete and stamp it? Um, yeah, so actually when I first started to apply to colleges, I wanted to be a nurse. I wanted to go in the medical field. So I had no, like I said, I wanted to be different from my sister and, and my dad. Um, found out that I cannot do the bloods and the guts and the everything. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, but then I was thinking about being a NICU nurse, like working with like, or a pediatrician right. nurse, like working with kids. So I really yep. liked kids working with them. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, I don't know, I might get too attached to them. Yep. They're yep. like, I can't do that. So, um, like I said, I job shadowed a lot of people in, cause I had my sister, my dad, like job shadow. And I found out I like teaching, just not mm -hmm. little kids. I couldn't do the kids, <laughs> I don't have the patience for them. So, um, I found out I liked secondary. And then, like I said, I did get into the secondary ed program, but at first I did chem because with the nursing, I was good at science and chem and bio. Uh, found out chem's a lot different from high school than it is with college. Um, and I wasn't really prepared to go into the higher level ends of all the sciences. So I kind of was like stuck. I was a secondary ed. I still had that, but I was blank. I didn't have like a subject and I knew I needed to decide on it. So it took me about like half a semester to really decide on what I wanted to do. Um, it was between like math and English. Sorry, I am not a history person. Even though I did take it, I took honors and AP all throughout high school. I was good. And I was just like, I don't know why I don't like it. It's oh, just, Cindy, I, I had it. such high hopes for you. It, it, How do we it, kick it. people out of this? Is there a button? <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but I found out I always liked reading. I always liked to write. I always wrote in journals. So I decided on the English. And mm -hmm. surprisingly, I love the English department. The professors are awesome here. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So are the education professors. I like them too. Um, but the English department's great here. So I was really happy with my decision. Cindy, English, uh, English, future English teacher, favorite <laughs> book. Um, so I love The Great Gatsby. I wrote oh, okay. a whole big paper on it when I was in high school and my teachers loved it. And I actually got it like, help, not uh, like our newspaper and stuff like that. So yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Hey, Look at me, but um, I love the Great Gatsby. I could read it a million times. Um, I tell my little okay. cousins, I'm like, read the Great Gatsby, and they're like, no, that's that's like school. And I'm like, it's still a good book. You can still read it. And they're like, no. So it's your turn to be disappointed in me. I have never read the Great Gatsby. Oh, it's a good you could have told me that the Great Gatsby was a magician or something, and I probably would have believed you. Don't watch so. the movies. I was there just going to ask if we could watch the movie instead. No, don't, don't watch, watch the movies. them. You need to read the book. Read the book first. Yes, read and the then, book first. Yeah. Trust me. 
Right, yes. right, right, Dr. Wilby, you're right. You were also an English major, so I'm, I'm preaching in the wrong choir here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also, like, film is my specialty, so I'm down with the oh, film okay. parts. So, you know. I'm, I'm, okay. I will suggest you can watch the movie, but read the book first. Read the book There's first. Okay, okay. Book, yeah. all right, all right. How many pages is it? It's not actually a too long of a book. I would say like 200. I don't have my copy with me, so I also would tell you, but- Okay, 200 pages, okay. It's, it's I, like I'm, chapter, I'm an avid reader, but I- chapter don't... book. I read it when okay. I was in like 10th grade, 9th grade, so- Okay, all right. I, it's, yeah, it's a great book. I like to read, but normally it's not what an English teacher would consider to be the classics by any means, so. I wouldn't think this is a too much of a classic. I think it's still out there that you can still okay. like enjoy the read and- so interesting okay all right great R rachel do you have anything to add about about your experience as an undeclared student and in, in your experience now advising undeclared students yeah um when i came in my parents didn't go to college um so i came in knowing about three professions you're either going to be like a doctor or a teacher or a, like a fire i don't firefighter i don't know but it was <laughs> i didn't know anything about these majors, I didn't know what communication was or communication right. studies. I didn't know what you could do with a media and journalism degree. I didn't know right. um, a lot of the other, like I had no idea what sociology was. Um, and it, it took a little bit of exploring on campus and having those introductory classes um, to get a breakdown of what these degrees are and what they can lead to. Um, and it's definitely something I had to learn when I came here. And um, I'm glad that I did, I was able to explore, but mm -hmm. also I know that I, I wasted some time um, staying, trying to get away from history, even though it was pulling me the whole time. Pulling you back. Yeah. Like a boomerang. Yep. No, I know. <laughs> I know. That's how history, that's how it happens. All right. Great. Thanks, Rachel. And, and Dr. Willoughby, your experience, although there's a typo in the year you graduated. I think you were like 2021 or something like that, right? That's the year you were born. Yeah, you I'm had stopped. told me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Um, I was also a first-gen student, so mm -hmm. like Rachel, kind of came to, knew I wanted to go to college, had no, it, like, no frame of reference for like what college was about what it was going to be like I mean literally nothing um yeah. so I had as I kind of alluded to before I sort of had like read a few too many like crime novels and watched a bit too much like law and order mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so I had it in my head I was going to be like a forensic psychologist. I wanted to like analyze current, like criminal minds sort of stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was super jazzed about that. And so I came to Bloomsburg as a psych major and took general psych and took psych stats and was like, man, you know, I really thought like, I was so excited about it and I thought I was going to love it, but this is an example of like some of those preconceived notions you have about what a major is going to do for you and what you're going to do in the classes and you right. know what the whole thing is like so I was like okay this is like really not my thing and so mm -hmm. rather than spend time like trying to make myself love psych I yeah. became undeclared and I was undeclared for probably like a semester and a half and sort of tried to get myself away from English but it like history and we were describing these majors yeah. like it's going to like reach out and clutch you you're not gonna be able to get away from it but um when you figure out like what you're passionate about it's really kind of like an aha moment where you go yeah right. this is it like you get in a class or you get with a good professor and right. you're like I feel this 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 you yeah. know turns something on in me you know right. and and then you know that that's that's the thing that you're going to be doing and I didn't I was that person who you know everyone was yeah. like what are you going to do with an English because I was straight English and they're like are you going to be a teacher like yeah. Sydney and I was like no I kind of don't want to deal with the whole teaching thing like you know yeah fast forward 20 years and, and now you're um, teaching at the college yeah. level yeah right right um but I didn't know that I loved that then right so it's been a it's been a journey even after you know 
my graduation from Bloomsburg. Right. So yeah, but it helped me to have that time and space to sort of go, okay, step back. It's right. like camera move where you like pull back and look at the whole landscape. Yeah. Um, Wide angle what, lens. What do I do here? Like, what is the thing? Where do I want to go? Uh, so how'd you settle on English then? What, what was the... Like Sydney, I always, like I loved reading, yeah. took AP English in high school. Like, you know, um, I, was a, I was a writer early, um, mm -hmm. wrote for my school newspaper. I wrote for The Voice. I was the editor of the Lit Journal when I was at Bloomsburg. Right. Um, so Warren is near and dear to my heart. Is this sponsored by the College of Liberal Arts? Today? I know. It seems I don't like know. It right kind of is. <laughs> yeah, but, it, so, I ended up being English major and art studio minor. And, you know, and I think what's interesting too is, is if you, you know, it, hindsight's always twenty twenty. you know, and the clarity is easy to identify now, but um, what's interesting is you would have been able to have, to identify like, oh, you know, I'm in, I'm interested into these things. I probably, I wonder if I want to consider this, right? You know, one of the advices, piece of advice I will always give incoming students is like, you want to major in something you like. Um, not necessarily, not only because of the career outcomes, right? The biggest mistake I see people make is that, you know, they go into this field because I want to make a lot of money. Look, going to college, it's an investment. Um, and college is not free, right? For most people, college is not free. So I, I get that part of it, right? You want to be self-sustaining, you know, and your parents and your supporters do as well. Um, but if you go into a major specifically because you want to make a lot of money, it, the odds of you being good at it is not particularly high if you don't like the field. Right. And if you're not good at it, no one's going to pay you to do it anyways. Right. Like you want to go into something that you enjoy. Cause if you're, if you like it, you'll probably be good at it. If you're good at it, someone's going to pay you to do it. Um, it that makes was, those long nights a lot easier when you enjoy correct. what you're thinking about. Right. Yeah. Identify what you like, pick your major based off of what you're interested in, pick your career based off of your major. You don't want to flip the process and pick the career first and then try to shoehorn your interest into whatever major would lead you to that career. That, that, that has never worked. Not one time. Yeah. You know, so I can hear my kids in the background. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's a huge um, consideration. Cause I think that does happen for some students. Like you go, I want to be a fill in the blank. And then they try yes. to figure out how to fit into that. Right. Um, and, and I think that's one of the beauties, like I will, you know, bang my gavel for general education, the general yep. education curriculum, because it asks you to, you, you must take a class in this, you must take a class in this and over here yep. and over here so that you, I don't want to say you're forced, but you're forced to kind of get out of your comfort zone sometimes. Yes. Like I almost had a minor in, um, geology because I took a geology really? course. Yeah, I took a geology course and I was like, this is awesome. I don't think I want to major in it, but I took, I think I was like two classes shy of a minor. I should have probably just done it, but, um, but I, those classes not too late. Classes Go back. So Finish. interesting. And like, I wanted to know all about volcanoes and earthquakes yeah. and rocks and stuff. Like, I love that stuff. Um, and I would have never had, I would have never taken that class, honestly, right. had I not been like, oh, I need a science course, you know? Right. Um, so that's, that's what a general education is for, is yeah. to get you thinking about stuff maybe in a different way. And it also, I have to, I have to kind of say this too, it helps you figure out what you don't like. Yes. Which honestly is almost just as important as finding it out is. what you do It really like. is. And the good thing about having, um, if you come in as exploratory and maybe you are majoring in psychology, not to pick on psychology, a lot of people love psychology, Yeah. Um, but a lot of people come in and it's not what they expect and they want to maybe go into some type of counseling, but they don't want to go get their medical degree um, yep. and be a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but they don't know about social work. They can get their master's in social work and become a counselor. And your advisors, um, especially in the exploratory area, know that there are other routes to be able to help you get to a career other than maybe what you thought before you came into college. And I think that's really helpful. Agreed. Like Sydney was saying about nursing, I think sometimes students, you know, you might have wanted to be a nurse because you, like you said, you wanted to be different from your family members, but that's another helping profession, right? Like that's 
I want to help that's understanding that the thing you want to do is help people. And that maybe there's a different way for you to do that than be a right. nurse or even be a teacher. Right. Or you, you want to work with kids, but you in a medical setting, but you don't want to be their nurse. You could minor in play works or child life specialists mm -hmm. and, and still kind of, I guess, scratch that itch, but maybe not the way you expected to. And I think yeah. it, all the clues were there, you know, it's like all yeah. the clues when you look, back to all of our academic and personal careers, like the, the clues were all there, you, you got to pay attention to it. The undeclared, you know, in an exploratory advising center is going to help you identify those things, you know, in, in a more like scientific, you know, um, approach as opposed to just like taking a shot in the dark kind of thing. But, all right, great. I'm watching your cat, Rachel. Oh yeah, up on top of, oh, with all the glass bottles. Uh -huh. That's, cute. That's really cute, isn't it? <laughs> Did anybody ever have a cat and get rid of it on the same day four years <laughs> later? <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, kind of all the things that we've just been talking about, um, I wanted to highlight on this next slide. It's just the reason, the best reasons for choosing a major are not necessarily, I'm going to make a lot of money or I want the prestige of being X, Y, or Z, but instead finding your passion, building on your talents and and thinking then about reaching a career goal with those things in mind, figuring yeah. out what it is that's really going to light your fire and then moving in that direction, finding creative ways maybe to, like Rachel said, scratch that itch. Like, I know I like doing this, but there might be five different ways I could do that in, in that many different majors. We can flip, Tom. Oh, sorry. Okay, so this is maybe the most important slide. Mm -hmm. So if you take nothing away from this, uh, except for one slide and a couple of things that we're saying, this is the important part. Um, so advice for being an exploratory student, um, you do, as we were saying earlier, kind of have to learn to self-advocate or to find that person like Rachel, who will help you do that. Um, but talking to people is one of the primary ways that you can make that happen. So talk to your advisor, that's the person who is really like their job is to help you figure these things out. They need you to help them do it. So they can't understand what you want or what you're interested in or what your questions are unless you go to them and have a conversation. So talking to your advisor early, building a relationship with that person is super important. Similarly, get to know your professors and make sure they know you. Most of the classes at BU are pretty small. There are some larger lecture courses where, you know, you're going to be in with maybe a hundred students or maybe I think the largest one now is like two, 220 or something like that. And that those are few and far between anymore. Um, most of the classes that you'll be in will be of a size where you can walk up to an instructor and introduce yourself and say, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so. I'm, you know, first year student, I'm really interested in this topic. I'm, I'm really enjoying this class. You know, is there something you can tell me about what you do and what this discipline is that, that maybe will help me decide what I'm doing moving forward. So those conversations are, they might be intimidating at first, but they're easy to have once you get started. And it's really important for you to get to know your, your professors, because those are the folks who have, you know, really expert knowledge in those fields that can help you kind of liaise with mentors and with the um, with alumni and professional engagement kind of work together to help you find that solid career path. As um, a professor, how much, how much would that excite you if somebody came up and wanted to learn more about your discipline? Oh, super exciting. <laughs> you would super be, exciting. I was I like probably. so jazzed <laughs> last semester when I learned that one of the students in my class had declared an English major. I was like, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. Like people are, are super pumped to talk to you about that. Don't ever have any illusions about that. <laughs> um, so the other thing that you can do is kind of put yourself out there. So like I said about general education, get out of your comfort zone, maybe a little bit, if there's a department that, you know, you're taking a class in and you think you might be kind of interested in it find out if that department has like a major club or if they have a student organization that you can be part of and kind of get to know some other students in that area too. Um, students who are taking introductory level courses sometimes are majors, but other times aren't. Um, and they can 
figure out, help you figure out, you know, what their experience has been in a particular discipline. And that can be super helpful too. Like Sydney was saying, kind of from a student perspective, um, who's a good professor to take, what class is really exciting, um, what sort of internship opportunities might be available in that area. So other students are a great resource. Thanks, because I forgot what the other bullets were. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. For whatever reason, it just, it just it closed out. I don't, I don't know what happened there. So kind of go along with that, just visiting the departments that are of interest to you. And I know Rachel can speak to this too, because she was a department secretary for a little bit. Um, department secretaries are worth their weight in gold. They have all kinds of information. Um, they know the landscape of the department really, really well. So if you're like kind of hesitant to talk to yeah. a faculty member or a department chair, talk to the department secretary. They are also super jazzed to talk to you. Yes. Um, and they know they all kinds awesome. of things. They got the skinny on everything. Like They're awesome. The education one is awesome. Stacy Stonak, yeah. she sends us emails like every two, like And two they make stuff week. happen. Like they have their God fingers on <laughs> Yeah, our, our staff, our departmental staff, super right. amazing. People are uh, prideful. They are. I mean, they're, they're, they're prideful. I mean, this is a part of who they are. This is part of their identity, right? So they're, they're prideful of, of their departments. I think you see that um, only, only you know, semi-jokingly with Rachel and I in the history program and, and, and Dr. Willoughby and Sydney with the English and, and the education program. Like, we're, we're, that's, that's part of who we are. Like, we take a lot of pride in that. So when I see a student who, you know, was a, his, you know, a history major and is doing something great now, it's like, yeah, like I kind of feel a part of that, you know, it's like we're all playing for the same team kind of thing. Yeah. And even when I was a secretary in communication studies, communication studies is now my team too. I root for that major yep. also right along with history. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, so finally that last bullet, I know we've been kind of harping on that a little bit, but be responsible and ask for help. Like be your own advocate. Right. Whether that means talking to a student mentor like Sydney, whether that means talking to a success specialist like Rachel or talking to a department member like myself or like Tom and admission, like find someone on campus that you feel comfortable with that can help you be led in whatever direction you need to, to be led in, you know, whatever questions you have, there's going to be somebody who knows where to find that information. Right. Um, but you have to ask. And that, that's, that's sometimes a mindset change for students because a lot of things in high school are kind of like right there, you know, right. to reach very far for them. Um, the folks who offer it to you are kind of hovering over you that whole time in your right. little high school bubble. But, you know, when we get to, to college, the, the bubble's a lot larger and yep. we, have to, we have to know what you need before we can help you find it. But that's really what we're here for. Yep, absolutely. And there's an expectation that you're kind of easing into adulthood. You know, you've, you've got this four year opportunity um, to kind of slowly grow up. Um, you're not like, you know, at the snap of the fingers, you graduate from high school and become an adult. Like they, we know, like you're not quite there yet. I mean, my wife would tell you I'm not there yet right right now. But like you've got this opportunity to kind of ease into, again, like these new responsibilities. And that's that's part of it is, is being assertive and saying, hey, I need this. Hey, I need help. Hey, I have a question. Can I ask you? Um, that's a really, really valuable skill set to start a, as a young person. And, and um, it's you know, part start of your development. When you're young. If we want to, if I want right. to give a plus one to psychology, it's part of your development as you're growing, yeah. um, as you go through the college, the traditional college years. This is part of how your brain grows. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So that that is our our, our event for tonight. Before we wrap it up, everybody, do you have any parting advice for, for the audience? If we can start with uh, Rachel. I would say don't sleep on um, alumni and professional development. Um, if you want a non-biased opinion of majors and to kind of get an idea of where you might fit best um, without the pressure of the, all of the majors want you. If you're, if you're accepted to Bloom, they want you to be their major. They want you to be in their, on their team. Um, so to kind of get an unbiased opinion of that to get somebody who kind of outside the situation, definitely go to alumni and professional development so they can help you um, with some other ideas, yep. perspectives. 
Yeah, okay. someone who's not, you know, sponsored by the College of Liberal Arts, like we've been talking about. <laughs> yeah, tonight, right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah. why I was laughing. Uh, Sydney. Um, I would just say explore. Open your mind up to everything because, trust me, you will quickly find out what you don't like and like um like it, go out re like if you're accepted go to different classes add drop week loved it freshman year loved it i went to classes sat in you can sit in the back and you still get the same effect of just seeing the professor like just explore just put yourself out there like do it don't hold yourself back because you're going to regret it in the end so just push yourself that's what i would say yeah great advice all right thanks Sydney. and uh, dr willoughby yeah, I think I'm going to echo Sydney because it's it can be scary, I think, to come to college and not and feel like you don't have a plan. Right. Um, but one of the things that it's our job to do in exploratory student advisement is to help you find that plan. And your experimentation with what you like and don't like is really a huge part of that. Um, that's really key to us helping you learn where you belong. Um, so, you know, taking those general education credits, don't be, I, I want to kind of say, be okay with being exploratory for a little while, because it's an opportunity, like taking all those different classes, figuring out what you like and don't like, and being like Sydney was saying, open to taking geology courses. <laughs> um, then that's, that's something that you might not have the opportunity to do again in your life. Like this is if you might find out you really love learning and you just want to do everything, which is kind of where I ended up, but, right. um, but yeah, you know, taking, taking advantage of this time to broaden your horizons and mm -hmm. really figure out what, what it is that lights your fire. Yeah, that's great advice. Great advice from everybody. So really appreciate it. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, I know we ran a little over. Um, so what I'll do is with the recording, I'll go through and timestamp it and we will repost it probably, uh, what's today, Wednesday, maybe by Friday or Monday. Um, again, it'll be posted here on Facebook and also will be posted on YouTube and probably on the Undeclare website as well. Um, so we look forward to hearing from everybody in the future. We hope this event has been helpful um, and have a great night. We look forward to seeing everybody on campus soon. See everybody. Thanks. <laughs>